yet another gorgeous afternoon here in Florida at Jupiter and Roger Dean Stadium, the spring training home of the St. Louis Cardinals. And this afternoon, the Redbirds will take on the Mets as they make the trek from Port St. Lucie. Yesterday against the Orioles, the Cardinals would win it 4-2. They fell behind 2-0 early, and then third baseman David Freeze down the right field line, a double that tied it up at 2-2. Felipe Lopez gave the Cardinals the lead, and then Freeze again would add to the Cardinal lead. That would make it 4-2. Kyle McClellan picked up the win for St. Louis. With my partner, as always, Al Roboski, I'm Dan McLaughlin. Now David Freeze is five for his last eight. And Al, I'll ask you the question, put you on the spot. Has he solidified his opening day spot? I think he really has. The last couple of days, he's hit extremely well. Maybe as important yesterday is he fielded the ball cleanly. He's had a little trouble defensively, and that's uncharacteristic for him. But I think this ball club gels a lot better if he is the everyday third baseman. And now we turn the page and look ahead to today in the New York Mets, and getting that start will be Chris Carpenter. And how about Carpenter spring so far? Well, Chris has really been victimized by terrible weather. He's had the windiest games. His numbers reflect it. He's not pitched as bad as the, you know, the 10-point ERA, and he's given up uh, 18 hits and nine innings. But this guy is the mainstay. He physically feels fine, and he'll be ready for that first week of the season. Now, talking about the rotation, we saw Rich Hill uh, really struggle yesterday in his start. Cal McClellan was solid. Ryan Franklin now four straight outings where he's been very good. So not many question marks remaining here in the last week to 10 days. It really is, and this team is pretty Pretty much set. There's uh, really 31 players in camp. You can really eliminate, you know, six of those guys very easy. So there's really the competition for about two spots. All right, looking forward to this one. The Mets from Port St. Lucie make the track to Jupiter, Florida. Big, big crowd on hand. The Cardinals and the Mets coming up on Fox Sports Midwest. St. Louis Cardinals baseball is brought to you by the Home Depot. Get your lawn looking like the turf at Bush Stadium with Bush Stadium fertilizer and grass seed mix by Scotts. Endorsed by head groundskeeper Bill Finley, it contains the same Scotts technology used at Bush. Buy it today at Home Depot. By Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers, number one for quality tires and expert auto service. And by Chevy. See your Mid-America Chevy dealers or shop and compare at SDLChevy.com. Windy day, especially near that right field line, and there's a look at Jerry Manuel, the manager of the New York Mets. Many believe he's on the hot seat coming into 2010, and a look at his lineup. Jordani Valdespan is their second baseman. Ruben Tejada, then Gary Matthews Jr. They picked him up in the offseason. Mike Jacobs, the former Cardinal, Fernando Tatis, Frank Catalanado, Henry Blanco, Fernando Martinez, and John Main. And they will face the co-ace of the Cardinals, Chris Carpenter. But as Al told you in our open, those numbers not indicative of what we've normally seen out of Chris Carpenter in years past. No, not at all. But high ERA, you can see only nine innings pitched. He really got roughed up his last time out. Seven runs allowed, but six of them in the first inning. Uh, but the numbers, the hits really weren't uh, reflective of, of giving up that many runs. A lot of C and I hits. This game is also being televised on ESPN and that's why we have the hold up and knowing Chris Carpenter the way that he warms up this drives him crazy when he's out in the mound and has to wait we've seen that in the past too. We sure have and he's just a, a warrior out there. You want to learn how to. Take the mound how to behave how to be a model of consistency just watch his mannerisms out there. He twice now has been. The comeback player of the year while that is a great award and certainly an honor it's one you don't want to have. <laughs> no it's uh, that means you've had injuries. You've had injuries and when he is healthy this club goes to postseason when he's injured it does not. And the numbers don't lie if he makes 20 starts and he took something off that pitch one and two. This team wins and they win the division and they head into the playoffs. Second in the National League Cy Young award balloting last season and has the best winning percentage in Cardinal history. And that misses up and away two balls two strikes. I've not had the chance to talk to you about that but controversy in many ways with Wainwright Lincecum and Carpenter and who would win the Cy Young and of course you and I are fairly biased because we're pulling for a Cardinal but I really felt on paper either one of those two guys should have won it. I agree and, and unfortunately they took votes away from each other. Uh, I, memory serves me right. Some of the balloters, I think there were three of them, that never even had Carpenter on their ballot. 
Javier Vasquez even got some votes. Well, I mean, he's a good pitcher, but he should have been down, you know, fourth or fifth. Right. 2 2 pitch. It's hammered foul into the Cardinal bullpen. You know, when Wainwright didn't win the 20th game and he was in line for that victory, it, it didn't happen. You know, it's, that really hurt his chances, but they took votes away from each other. Two balls, two strikes. We're just underway here at Roger Dean. Took some off that pitch again and foul. So good at bat here by Jordani Valdespin, one of the minor leaguers for the New York Mets. Dan, they don't even know who he is. I was talking to some of their coaches and they said we took him on one road trip earlier. He wasn't even in our organization. You know, we, we feel he's a pretty talented ball player. 2-2. Two -two. He's having a good at bat here to lead off the game. In the last couple games, they've been playing at home, so they've had their more established stars in the lineup. So a lot of the youngsters are going to get a chance to play for the first time in quite a while in this game. It almost looks like it's a split squad, but sure it is does. not. They have been dealing with injuries of their own. We have the Mets slapped into center field. Mather is there to make the catch. Now, Mather is a late insertion into the lineup for the Cardinals because of a bruised right knee to Colby Rasmus, but that's not anticipated to be a very serious. So, Holiday, Mather, and Ludwig in the outfield. Felipe Lopez gets the start at third. Brendan Ryan and Skip Schumacher up the middle. Albert Pujols over at first, and Jason LaRue is in there for the injured Yadier Molina. So not much concern as you look at Mather there with Colby Rasmus being out today. But when we got to the ballpark, the big concern is uh, the Cardinals' number one catcher, Yadier Molina. And that's tapped foul by Ruben Tejada. And Molina was hurt on his slide yesterday with a strained oblique, and he said his hand caught in the dirt sliding into second base, and... That's nothing to fool around with. So this could be something that hopefully doesn't linger. But at this point the Cardinals are going to give him rest and see exactly how it turns out. I, I saw him in the clubhouse. He is sore. This is popped up playable for Albert Pujols near his dugout two away. Hadn't really been evaluated by the doctors yet. They usually like to wait 24 hours and see how it responds to the initial treatment. But he's one of the guys out on this team for Tony La Russa that you could ill afford to lose. And that's not to take anything away from LaRue. But you know you talk about controlling a running game and handling a pitching staff and a familiarity with it he's the guy that you could probably least afford to lose you're correct you know Matt Pagnazzi has been sent down he would be the one that more than likely would be recalled and making Jason your your everyday catcher but the respect that Tony and Dave Duncan have for Yadier Molina is is supreme and they really are tough on their catchers they give them an awful lot of responsibility and both Molina and, and, and LaRue handle those responsibilities very well. And here is Gary Matthews Jr. back in the National League, and he'll tap that one foul. Picked up in the offseason from Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Exchange for a pitcher, Brian Stokes, and with City Field as big and as spacious as it is, you know, a guy like Gary Matthews Jr. should fit in just fine in New York. Very good defensive player. Did he take advantage of a free agent year a couple years ago? <laughs> Texas, kind of out of nowhere. Got the huge contract, and then the Angels replaced him. And so he's welcome to get an opportunity to play every day. Only made 80 starts last year with the Angels, and he looks at a called third strike. So good start here for Chris Carpenter. Cardinals coming up in their half of the first. Great Fruit League action. We want to remind you, you see at the top of that graphic, FoxSportsMidwest.com. You can go there for player profiles and many of the features throughout spring training and throughout the season. Our revamped website. A look at the Cardinals lineup. This spring, the Cardinals as a team hitting 278. It'll be the second baseman, Schumacher, then Brendan Ryan at short. Albert Pujols will bat third. Matt Holiday cleanup, followed by Ryan Ludwig. Felipe Lopez, the switch hitter and third baseman today. Then Joe Mather, Jason LaRue, and Chris Carpenter. No DH today, so the pitchers will hit for themselves, and the Cardinals will face John Main coming off an injury plague season a year ago. Those are his spring numbers, one and one with a high ERA. And the first pitch, a strike. He's trying to find himself and he acquaint himself in the rotation. He has pitched very effectively, and particularly against left handed batters. Very good against those lefties. Last year, they hit just 159 against him. That was sixth best in the uh, National League. 
John's had a lot of trouble with that shoulder and that's what kind of did him in last year again. And Schumacher rolls over on the pitch hit to second. And there's one away. Skip is now nine for 48 here this spring but has been hitting better as of late. Look at the Mets defense today. Catalanado, Matthews Jr. and Martinez in the outfield. Fernando Tatis over at third. Then Tejada and Valdez spin up the middle. Jacobs over at first, the former Marlin, and Henry Blanco is behind the plate. Terry Manuel does believe that he's going to have a much better season this year. Health is a factor. You know, at one point they're missing David Wright. Of course, they're missing Jose Reyes. Carlos Delgado is out. John Main missed time. You have those kind of names and bats out of your lineup. Santana. You're not going to win. Yeah, Santana <laughs> was out for a little bit. They do have K Rod at the back end of games, and they said that uh, he looks tremendous here this spring. One ball, one strike on Brendan Ryan. And Ryan cranks one out to deep left field. Catalanado back, and it's one to nothing, Cardinals. Up into the porch out there in that building. And Brendan Ryan, his first home run this spring. One of the things he's been working with Big Mac is trying to stay back, trying to drive the ball. You know, he almost had a try to take advantage of his running speed where he would almost swing and be running out of the box trying to make contact. But they have been working and it's coming to fruition as you see him drive this ball and act like he's a, a home run hitter. But that was long gone. Here's Albert Pujols. It's about 355 just to the left of where he hit that. It's on that light pole, and he put one up into the porch out there. Here's the 0 1. One ball, one strike on Pujols, who is hitting 208, one home run, and four RBIs. And uh, Pujols was talking about his back after the game yesterday, and it's a muscle situation, not a disc. And we saw him take some really good quality rips yesterday and let it loose. And he's back in the lineup today. Five for 11 against this pitcher, John Main, in his career with a couple of home runs. The 2 1 pitch. Pull the foul. Jose Okendo, the Cardinal third base coach, back for another year. Only change on this Cardinal staff was Hal McCray. No longer with the club, and Mark McGuire, the new hitting coach. Two two pitch. Foul back. I mean, that's a cut right there, Al, that you see him just let loose, and that's good to see with that sore back that he's had. And the same could be said for Matt Holliday yesterday. You know, you get hurt when you try to, you know, protect yourself. And Pujols fouls it back. Most impressive player in camp might be A.J. Pujols. Albert's son. I was telling people that uh, if you could buy stock, that <laughs> wouldn't be a bad one to get some, some of. He already is rounding into a, you know, number one uh, status in the draft class. And a call third strike and a high strike on Pujols, and he didn't like it. And it brings in Matt Holliday. We're talking about McGuire has been working with Brendan Ryan trying to get his weight back, trying to get a little backswing. Look at how straight he is. You know, real balance there, symmetrical, and then the extension. When you would look at some of his shots from a year ago, his upper body would be way out in front across the plate. His legs already starting to run, and he's trying to, to swing the bat just to make contact. And Utilize that running speed. It was a real nice shot of him that freeze there and seeing what you're talking about. And try to get that little backspin, which gives you that distance. Helps you hit more line drives also. I talked to Mark McGuire about Matt Holiday, and those two have worked out with each other the last couple of years about the high leg kick. And McGuire said, look, I'm going to give my input to every guy. That doesn't mean it's always going to work. And with Matt Holiday, he felt more comfortable going back to the high leg kick, but still the principles of what he was teaching still in play. Most definitely. And, and you know, you talked to Matt and he said, listen, I believed in what Matt was telling me a year ago to the point where I started doing it. 
It just I didn't get the results, and so it's only human nature when you're a batting champion that you go back to what made you successful. But it's the mental aspects is where Mark is going to help these guys. It's not one set way to hit, not one set way to pitch. Three balls and one strike on Matt Holliday. And he hits it foul out of play. And you see that shot of McGuire. He is taking notes. And I, I talked to McGuire extensively about that today. Every pitch of every game this year, he'll be making a note. And he says, I'm not looking at the pitcher at all. He says, I watch my hitters. And even on pitches that are taken for balls, I want to see how they're looking it into the mitt. Are there, is their weight back? Are their hands back? And so he'll keep a note. On every pitch, and he said he started doing this uh, about five days ago because batters would come back to him and say, Well, what did I do in this particular at bat on this day? And he said, I couldn't remember. Yeah, and, and think about it too, where we've had some of the times where some of the hitters who said, Okay, I'm not going to swing, I just want to sit there and watch a pitch stand in the batter's box. First walk allowed by Maine, two out walk, and it brings in Ludwig. And those two worked out together this past offseason, Brendan Ryan and Mark McGuire. Uh, you know, Mark has really got into the swing of things. He was down here earlier one time, and after they went from the field, when the, everybody went to lunches, Mark McGuire and Mark Aldretti went to the batting cages and waited for guys to come to them. The high fly ball out to center that'll hang up there for Gary Matthews Jr. And after one the Cardinals have a one run lead thanks to their shortstop and a long home run the first this spring for Brendan Ryan. After one one nothing St. Louis. Brendan Ryan has given the Cardinals a one run lead. So we move into the top of the second. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Cardinals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form in the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. Mike Jacobs Fernando Tatis and Frank Catalanado against Chris Carpenter who had a one two three first. We should tell everybody at home Al, watching today we are excited that every game this season on Fox Sports Midwest will be delivered in high definition. All 130 games on FSM, but every Cardinal game this season will be televised in high definition. And that's put away by Mather, but uh, every game right here on FSN in high definition, and that begins next week when we're at Target Field in Minnesota. And it's isn't that strange, Dan? I mean, we're all going. How can you have an outdoor stadium in in Minneapolis? And, and then I and then I think, you know, I played in an outdoor stadium there. Never and thought about. It? Well, you know, you just deal with it. You deal with it. Right. Dave Duncan and I were talking one time. He said, "How did we play on the turf?" And you, you know, all of a sudden you realize you go, "You didn't know any better." Sure. That's what the conditions were. Now we have to have a roof in cold weather cities. Tapped out in front of the mound, and Carpenter is there. Low throw and barehanded by Albert Pujols. He barehands it. Don't miss this spring training special. Sign up for a subscription to Cardinals Game Day magazine. You receive two free tickets to a 2010 Cardinals home game. How about that? You get the magazine and a couple of tickets. Steve Zesh and his crew back home in St. Louis. Number to call is 345-9303 or visit cardinals.com slash publications. And the whole hum, no big deal, barehanded. Yeah. Understand it's raining back home, so I'm sure everyone's enjoying the 79 degree weather down here in Florida. Carpenter comes down here and a little mild crow hop and then a little wide throw, but Albert saves the day. I don't think he burned him out with that throw, did he? No, I think he's going to be <laughs> all right. I'd prefer to see him use the leather. <laughs> yes. Let's just avoid any kind of injury. Frank Catalanato, longtime American League player, two balls and no strikes, two and one. I, I would imagine for the folks in Minnesota, though, for them to get out and watch a game outdoors after dealing with, you know, single-digit temperatures, 30, 40 degrees is going to feel balmy. 
it'll be fine. I think it's fine. And if I remember right, Kyle McClellan checked the weather yesterday. And he told me that he checked the weather for next Thursday and it was like 58, 42. It'll be fine. And he said, we'll take it. Yeah. It's a five o'clock game, so that'll help a little bit. And then Saturday will be, uh, you know, one o'clock normal time. And then we'll be off to Cincinnati for getting ready for the opener. 3 2 pitch misses down and in. So a two out walk to Catalanato. The Twins apparently have sold out every game this year at uh, the new Target Field. And folks obviously very, very excited about the addition of Joe Maurer for years to come. And if you're the Twins, really, you had no choice. You had to get the Maurer deal done. Local product, you know, just a. Not only a franchise player, but uh, sounds like just a, a wonderful young man. Grandparents go to every game. Brendan Ryan showing off the range, flips to Schumacher. Midway through two, one nothing Cardinals on Brendan Ryan solo home run. You got one hit in this ball game, and it's off the bat of Brendan Ryan. Tony La Russa's Cardinals with a one-run lead and. We've televised yesterday and today and let's take a look at some of the plays from number 13 that was on a relay and a gun down at the plate perfect throw for Brendan Ryan had an infield hit yesterday against the Orioles also stole the base off their lefty and their starter that wasn't even close and then today solo home run in the first also very good play to his left and here's Felipe Lopez well, Brendan Ryan with the wrist surgery he had right before spring training there was concern that he would not be ready but I think he's answered that question looks very good yeah and you know with with his overall effervescence you know you knew that uh, if he had enough playing time he, he'd be ready for opening day and I think there's no question he'll be there one and two the count here on Lopez I, I think they're you know really like to get Felipe going the switch hitter that can be such an integral part of this team with his versatility he struggled offensively. One ball and two strikes. Slaps it into play. This will be a tough play for Fernando Tatis and no throw. Infield hit for Felipe Lopez. Defensive swing and good things happen. Put the ball in play and you know he's got a possibility. Lopez had an RBI double to give the Cardinals the lead yesterday and they never looked back and won the ball game four to two. No matter the benefit of Kobe and that little bruised knee, Mather gets an opportunity to show that he can play center field. Add to his resume. He has hit 227. One home run and nine RBIs this spring. And as we've seen in the past, he'll give you some power from this side of the plate off the bench. He wanted to be in consideration for that third base spot. The Cardinals have given the longest look to David Freeze. Lopez gives you insurance there, but Mather can give you insurance at first, third, and any outfield spot. As you said, in particular, center field. 1 0 pitch. Out in front, pulls it foul. That's what kind of separates him from Stavanoa and Alan Craig is his ability to play center field. Do you anticipate that we see more of a, I, I would, I guess, use the word standard everyday lineup from Tony La Russa and not as much switching and positions uh, in and out of the lineup? It's going to be tough for him, isn't it? Yeah. With Ann Keel here, it was uh, a different deal. Double play ball 6 4 3 where you could adjust your outfield and make sure the guys got at bats but uh, a little different this year with no Ann Keel and I guess the guy that falls into that spot would be three players with Lopez's flexibility and then you have second base and third base. Well you can I, I talked to Tony a little bit yesterday about the possibility of going north without a left handed bench hitter and the only one would be Felipe Lopez the switch hitter. But not a true left handed hitter. And he says, you know, we'll deal with it if that's the way it is. And many times, Lopez is going to be in your uh, everyday lineup. Correct. You know, depending if you're facing a lefty, then Schumacher may sit and he'll play second. 
and on the other side if it's a righty David Fries might sit and Lopez would be over at third base. You know, he, he came to St. Louis with the idea that he was going to play a lot and even though he might technically be a bench player he's going to wind up with four to five hundred at bats. Yes. One and two the count on LaRue. Now Felipe could play a little outfield but he could play second short and third. Two and two. It does handicap your strategy when you look at that bench and you got one switch hitter, no left handed batters, and say four right handed hitters. Mm -hmm. And those some of those right handed hitters are pretty much the same type of player. Popped up. On the infield, Maine will get out of the way. And the shortstop Tejada makes the catch. Martinez, Maine, and Valdespin coming up. Get your lawn looking like the turf at Bush Stadium with Bush Stadium fertilizer and grass seed mix by Scotts, endorsed by head groundskeeper Bill Finley. Contains the same Scotts technology used at Bush Stadium, and you can buy it today at Home Depot. Dan McLaughlin, Al Rabaski with you. Top of the third rolls in here on Fox Sports Midwest. Fernando Martinez, their right fielder, leads it off and takes a ball. Home plate umpire C.B. Buckner today. Ed Rapuano, Jerry Meals, and Bruce Dreckman along the infield. A little bit low, 2-0. Oh. Jesus has had a very good spring. He's tied for fourth in the Grapefruit League with 17 hits, second with a 447 batting average. Breaks his bat here. Hit it off the end of the bat, and it's foul. Two it, balls and one strike. Three home runs and 11 RBIs, but Carpenter looks like he's a little dialed in a little bit more. His numbers have not been good, but uh, I think if Chris Carpenter tells me he's healthy, I don't worry about him at all. No. Now, Tony has not designated who his opening day starter is. And Carpenter's making his fourth start. He'll have one more before. We start the regular season. Slowly hit towards first and a foul ball. No David Wright here, no Jose Reyes for the Mets. David Wright trying to have a bounce back year, and really all the Mets trying to have a bounce back season after a real disappointing campaign. Well, the Mets sure got some good news when they got uh, the medical clearance for Jose Reyes. Begin baseball activities. As we talked yesterday, though, he has missed so much time. Basically, all of last year. Hasn't played in a live game here in the spring. Had a hyperactive thyroid, and Jerry Manuel saw his shortstop go back to New York, be worked on, finally cleared two days ago. 2 2 pitch. Ground ball sharply hit to the second baseman, Skip Schumacher. I was trying to chip Hale. One of Jerry Manuel's bench coaches, and he drove over here from Port St. Lucie after working out Reyes, and he says he really does look in very good shape and completely healed from his leg injuries, but they're going to be very cautious and not pushing that. 30 pitches for Chris Carpenter so far today, 22 strikes, and here's John Main. We saw Schumacher make that play on a Hard hit ball right to him and for him now those are routine but this time last year you really uh, weren't sure what to make of Schumacher going into the regular season. Well, we stopped talking about that pretty soon though didn't we. And the Cardinals rewarded him with a nice contract extension and security for he and his family. He's emerged now as one of the leaders on this team. I don't know if you caught it but remember one of the fan favorite Shane Robinson. Guess what he's starting to play. Second base. <laughs> the, outf the diminutive outfielder now is starting to. Hey, Schumacher could do it. Look, he bring back Stubby Clay. Yeah. Maybe he can play second. One ball and two strikes. Saw uh, Shane Robinson last year in the uh, major leagues for a handful of games. Yeah. Good speed, not a big guy. Runs very well. And a strikeout second of the afternoon for Carpenter. He's got 
two the first uh, time through this order. Brings in Valdespin who lined out to center and a very good at bat to open the game. It was about a seven pitch at bat against Chris Carpenter. Just considered how few pitches he's thrown that that was such a lengthy at bat. So two outs nobody on and the first pitch is strike. Wind is blowing from right to left. It's in the dirt one ball one strike. Windy day here in Jupiter Florida. Very pleasant though and a packed house. Just missed two balls and one strike. So many St. Louisans down here, including Howard Schur. He's here with his family, wants to say hi to family and friends back home. Met the nice family, the Schultzes from Moscow Mills, Mike, Lindsay, Miles, enjoying all the weather down here. And want to say hello to everybody back home. We wish we could always. Acknowledge everybody, but Cindy and John Whipke. Full count here on the leadoff man, Valdespin. Call third strike on the inside corner. Two strikeouts in the inning, three in the game for Chris Carpenter. Carpenter leads it off when we come back. And nasty pitch, one nothing midway through third. Chris Carpenter with three strikeouts today, and he'll lead it off at the uh, Cardinals half of the third. It's one nothing St. Louis. First pitch taken a little high from John Main. Cardinals lead it on a solo home run by Brendan Ryan that was back in the first inning. Two balls, no strikes. Carpenter here, and then the top of the lineup, Schumacher and Brendan Ryan. I'm surprised you haven't said, don't swing. I've been thinking <laughs> it. I know you have. And so is Carpenter. Those oblique scare me. Right. Especially most of the spring, you use always using the DH, trying to you know, see position players get at bats. Some of the American League clubs just cringe when they think about their pitchers hitting or having to run down the first baseline. They are a little better athletes than that. Up the middle. Backhanded. Play it first and a nice pick by Jacobs. Valdespin showing off the range and a good pick there by Mike Jacobs. We know Carpenter though for what he does on the mound and two of his three strikeouts have been on this variety against the lefties Al. It's that cutter that cuts back over the plate. Well, he's got exceptional stuff. And when you're talking about you've got a cutter that comes in on him, that's why you'll get guys to give up on this pitch, which is the sinker that comes back to the middle. The cutter comes into the left hander, then that pitch, they think it's going to run right in on their hands. They give up on it, and it just tails back to the strike zone. How many times have we seen that? He just freezes those left handed batters. It's coming at their knee almost and then goes right back yeah, over the and, middle. And of the because it's so effective, is, is because he has that cutter that does keeps on running in on them. And that's what they, gets their attention. That ball hurts when it hits you. <laughs> Don't let anybody tell you it doesn't. You know, Maddox had that great pitch that he could do it. He was doing it 86, 88. Carpenter, you're doing it 92, 93. Two and one the count on Schumacher. Grounded out to second his first time up. And about the time you have that figured out then he throws that great curveball. Two and two. Mentioned that skip is nine for forty eight so he's under two hundred for the spring but has picked it up here in the last week or so. Get out of play. Two and two. Skip's another one of those guys you don't really worry about it. You know. Also, you can 
go back into his memory banks. Remember a couple years ago, he started out about 0 for 16, 1 for 20, and still hit 300 that year. He's had back to back seasons of hitting 300 in the major leagues. And remarkable as we, the conversion from outfielder to second base and still maintain that 300 average out of the leadoff spot for a championship caliber team. 2 2. Slap foul again by Schumacher. Brendan Ryan on deck. He is homer today. We saw Rich Hill make the start yesterday, Alan. Uh, unimpressive. I think it's probably a two horse race now when you think about that fifth starter, Kyle McClellan and Jaime Garcia. And Schumacher again spoils the 3 2. Rich Hill offers you protection at the AAA. You know, he's still only 30 years of age and Traditionally, a lot of left-handed pitchers are late bloomers. You know, he just has to mentally get a little tougher, refine those mechanics, throw more strikes. But I, I agree with you. It's, uh, you know, to me, he's not part of that equation right now. And the tenth pitch in the at bat, he flies out to center. Gary Matthews Jr. and Schumacher is 0 for 2. Follow the Cardinals on your iPhone, iPod Touch, Blackberry, with MLB.com at Bat 2010, featuring play-by-play, -play, video highlights, and live audio broadcasts. You can find out more at Cardinals.com on your iPhone or iPod Touch to purchase. Here's Brendan Ryan. McClellan, they didn't uh, stretch him out. Yesterday he could have gone an inning or two longer but uh, through 40 pitches total was very efficient when he was out there. Open put up six shutout innings. In that ball game and Kyle was. Declared the winner. Uh, but then a little bit going into that. The thinking that I have is the. They're not sure that they can cover the innings if they take Kyle McClellan out of, out of the bullpen. Cardinals extended their win streak yesterday to four games. It's the second time they've done that in spring. Bullpen has allowed only two runs in their last 14 innings. They've been very good. One two pitch. Ryan Franklin finished off the game last night or yesterday afternoon I should say. Scoreless ninth. Gave up one hit and he now has worked four consecutive scoreless appearances. You know how they they use the closer prior to yesterday they use him more in the middle of the game. So that was really his first save opportunity and you get into this last uh, 10 days or so you know Tony Russo will start using his bullpen like it was in the regular season. A 3 2 pitch. Popped up. Shallow center Gary Matthews Junior. Makes the catch. Cardinals go in order. Carpenter back to work. One nothing St. Louis after three. Spring training is in full swing and our next spring training telecast is Friday. Cardinals take on the twins from Target Field in Minnesota. And before the game it's Cardinals classics. Giant killer and the spring training report. Catch Cardinals spring training on Fox Sports Midwest and of course at Fox Sports Midwest. Dot com. Fourth inning for Carpenter. He has struck out three. He has walked one. And is yet to allow a base hit. Ruben Tejada here, the second place hitter, followed by Gary Matthews Jr. And then Mike Jacobs. This is more of the Chris Carpenter we're accustomed to seeing. Exactly. Exactly. This is Chris, you know, saying, okay, he's getting a little closer. I'm going to start dialing it up a little bit. It's Tejada. They are very high on. Albert over. What a play. Nice catch. You can see where that camera well jets out a little bit near the dugout. He's got about an extra 
10 feet or so knew exactly where he had to go and made the catch over his shoulder and the wind is a factor here in spring training two hands Albert would be maybe surprised as you see the camera well and dealing with that padding but uh, they were telling me Tejada they say this guy is really a smart ball player and I, and baseball always wants to compare him to other players. I said Polanco. It's a pretty high compliment. Polanco now is moved after a couple of gold glove years in Detroit at second base. He's the third baseman for the Phillies. And Pedro Feliz, their third baseman, is now with Houston. Two balls and no strikes on Gary Matthews Jr. Mets are in a tough division with the Phillies. You figure the Braves are going to be better this year. They've improved their club. Now I'll ask you, I guess you have to see it to believe it, but this is going to be Bobby Cox's final year in uniform. He has announced his retirement. This will be it. Seeing is believing, right? Yeah. Uh, knowing Bobby and I, th I think he'll be able to move on. You know, he has been a general manager in the past. He has uh, done some other things. And you know, he will have a an advisory role with the ball club. How many more years would Tony do? You know, now we're starting to hear Tony may want to go into a front office position, but I don't see that for a few more years. Not with this club and not with the, uh, number five sitting at first base. I mean, this club is set up to win this year and beyond. As long as they stay healthy with Carpenter and Pujols and Wainwright, Holiday, Schumacher in the fold for a couple of years, a young Brendan Ryan, Rasmus is 23. I'll put it this way, Dan. I, I saw one time where if you pick up the the option of Wainwright and Carpenter in 2012, you know what you can pay Holiday, a prorated 25 million dollars a year for for Albert. It's sixty six million dollars for four guys. You better have a very very productive farm system if you want to keep your payroll around 100. One of the guys that we've heard a lot about this spring. And unfortunately we're not going to be able to see him but uh, Shelby Miller and that's one of the guys that you're talking about that hopefully stays healthy progresses through the system and in a couple of years you'd see him. Yeah but I, I mean you're going to have to have guys like that this year you've got you're fortunate that you got a Brendan Ryan. David Freeze, maybe two position players that are making right at the minimum. Uh, they're a little bit under 500,000. Then you can have the high pace. You know, you're talking about 2012. What, what's the audience contract going to be at that Absolutely, point? Absolutely, yeah. You know, maybe as early as next year, if Ryan Ludwig has a very productive year, which we anticipate, maybe he has to be a victim because you can't keep him. You know, you already, you already got $200 million players in your lineup. You've got four guys making over ten million dollars. <laughs> it's, it's, it's good. Point, it, gets, yeah. it gets to the point where all of a sudden you know you start losing some real key components because you know they, their contract is up and justly deserved a, a, a pay increase but you can't afford to do it. You got to have those zero to three guys to to have the higher price guys. Another sharp breaking ball by Carpenter to Mike Jacobs here. Two outs. Nobody on, nothing into the count. Ludwig has had back to back very solid years for the Cardinals. Oh, oh. Right now, Carpenter's dealing. And that right, that pitch right there, Jacobs is lucky to still be standing there. He is at the umpire's mercy, and CB Buckner blew it. My goodness. <laughs> Spring training for them, too. <laughs> Here's a one two pitch. The previous hitter Gary Matthews Junior was a three two change up that he threw him. Well he just has filthy stuff. That's how you describe a, a carpenter or Wainwright. The two two. Got him. No argument there from Jacobs. He knew it. That's five strikeouts through four innings for Chris Carpenter. Two time comeback player of the year. Looking sharp today.
St. Louis Cardinals baseball is brought to you by Hyundai. Searching for savings, you'll find it today at your St. Louis Hyundai dealers. In steps Albert. Struck out looking his first time up on a high pitch. And looks at ball one from John Maine. Cardinals lead it one to nothing. Have just joined us. And a Brendan Ryan solo home run back in the first. Pujols is hitting right around 200 for the spring. One home run, four RBIs. High fly ball lifted into left center field. And this ball is gone. It's a home run. Solo home run for Albert Pujols. That looks like gets the ball up in the air to left field. It's going to carry. And that's still a pretty good swing on it. Down and in, shortest part to the ball and field. And Albert knew he hit that pretty well. You're right, though. The flagpole down the left field line, you see the flags, and it's blowing pretty hard from left center to left. And it's whipping in right field, too. Pujols with his second home run this spring. One and one the count on Matt Holiday. He's taking a couple swings the last two days that you know he's that rib cage is solid. Thinking the same thing. And that last swing was a yes. good example. That's hit out of play. He made the point the other day. He said, I'm not going to play unless I can let it rip. And I'm not going to chance it. It's spring training. And unless I feel 100%, I'm not going out there. You have to play that way when you're a big man like this that is so strong. Because if you're trying to you protect it, you're going to re injure it. And then you're back to square one. And it's not a situation where Holiday's trying to make the club. You know, it's one thing if you're a young player and you're on the, the cusp of making it, you want to make sure that you're in there every day, you get a chance as Holiday's hit by the pitch. But. With a hundred twenty million dollar contract you've made the team. Fox Sports Midwest takes you inside Cardinal Spring Training with Mark McGuire. Got him wired up. We'll sit him down and visit with him. And that's Mark McGuire coming up at uh, 730 spotlight on Wednesday. Dan I think it would be a very poor signing. If you pay a guy 120 million and he's not guaranteed to make your team. <laughs> Now McGuire was still active when Pujols first made the club and he's the one that said to Tony you'd be crazy not to keep this guy injury to Bobby Bonilla Albert Pujols made the club and the rest is history. Maybe the biggest question going into spring training was how much of a distraction would Mark McGuire be and. Now a month or so has passed and it's not even talked about anymore. Well, I think you've got to give Mark credit because he's handled every request down here. He has been extremely fan friendly signing autographs on a daily basis. I still think that when you get into the regular season every town we go to is going to be a columnist is, is a column is going to be written. And then the if it's a. Two town paper, then you know you get multiple ones. And, but but he is he is so relaxed. Well, and for people that don't know from the media side of things, he's been overwhelming, uh, accommodating in any kind of form, whether it be you know meeting one on one with the the media or or doing a group setting. But uh, he's been very gracious with his time and uh, very accommodating, and all subjects. Have been talked about. The ownership uh, had a nice little party for everyone last night. The you know the all the owners were in town for a meeting and had a little get together. And the coaches were there and talking with some of the owners, just watching. And they're always just sitting there saying, "Look at how how relaxed Mark is. Look at how he's having fun." And it's good to see. I, I just think the whole world was lifted when he came clean. 
Three and one the count here on Ryan Ludwig. Inning started with a home run by Pujols. Holiday was hit by a pitch. There's a ground ball hit to third to Tease near the line. Long throw. And Ludwig is out advancing on the play. Holiday. Good base running there. Advances from second to third. Tatis gave him a quick look back, but not very much. And then he didn't have much on that throw. And almost up the line a little bit. Almost pulling Jacobs off the bag, but said heads up, alert base running, anticipation. Holiday saw his opening and took it. Got to get this man in. They got the infield in. Lopez pops it up. Tatis calling for it and has it for the out. Added back. Anyways, the Mets were giving you a gift there. First of all, by having Holiday advance from second to third, then the infield drawn in. Infield drawn in, you know, really just pull the ball. Hit the ball hard on the on the right side. Some guys can get in RBI situations. They get a little over anxious. And they get themselves out. Here's Joe Mather grounded into a 6-4-3 double play. First time up. And looks at a strike. Cardinals lead it. Thanks to two solo home runs. Brendan Ryan is first of the spring. Albert Pujols here this inning with his second of the spring. One ball, one strike. in that dangerous two hole. On the outside corner one and two. Two balls, two strikes. See if Mark McGuire can really work and shorten up the swing of, of Joe Mather. It's been his biggest concern. Yeah, he's, you know he's had those wrist injuries, but he's he's got a long swing. Taken low, three and two. Carpenter has been very sharp today. Having struck out five, there's a look at McGuire keeping notes. <laughs> Three two pitch in the dirt. Extends the inning to Jason LaRue. Again, for folks that have just tuned in, LaRue is filling in for Yadier Molina. Molina with a strained oblique. And the Cardinals, Tony LaRue is saying that they're going to be very cautious. Obviously, with Yadier Molina. And this is yesterday. Molina with a base hit down the left field line, extending it to a double. He set on the slide. His right hand got caught in the dirt, also jammed his foot into the bag and then trying to advance in a ground ball you can see that uh, it comes up sore on that left side and he knew it popped up off the bat of LaRue Cardinals will strand too but they pick up the home run from Albert Pujols back in the first it was Brendan Ryan he got things going for St. Louis Albert second of the spring two nothing after four. Chris Carpenter back to work. Grapefruit League action. The Mets and the Cardinals here on Fox Sports Midwest. And Carpenter is yet to allow a base hit. He's walked one and struck out five. Fernando Tatis, the former Cardinal, leads it off here in the top of the fifth. And the Cardinals have a 2 0 lead. First pitch taken outside. And joining us is 
Cardinals GM John Mozeliak and first of all thanks for being with us we appreciate it. Well, thanks for having me it's great to be with you. How about spring training and the way that uh, things have transpired what have you thought so far. Well it's been a good spring training so far I think you know the one thing we really haven't seen is our full club out on the field at any one time and yesterday was was going to be that first day and then unfortunately uh, Molina pulled a little side muscle and, and so uh, we're going to have to wait probably to opening day before we see that whole group on the field as as we had uh, constituted. So, so are you saying then Molina could be available for opening day. I think there's a, a, a real good chance for that. Yeah. He was very optimistic this morning when I spoke with him of course you know the next 24 hours 48 hours will probably be more telltale but I'm optimistic. And you have to be very pleased what you're seeing from Carpenter today. Oh absolutely. You know, he's had a pretty good camp. He had that one day where I think he probably wishes he could forget but. At, at the end of the day it, it is where you're just going in to get your work and, and no one's worked harder this spring than he has. Yeah I talking to him about that last outing it was the first inning and he said it really. The numbers looked much worse than what the actual hits were. A little bleeder through the well, right side than one through the left side. You know, he, and I did make a few mistakes, but uh, you know, he get your work in. A veteran guy like that, if he says he's healthy, you trust him. Right, and you know, it was one of those days where every little hit seemed to have like a, a two x magnitude on it. And it <laughs> just become became something like it just couldn't stop. And, but we all know what he's capable of doing, and uh, we're very glad we have him on our club. Here's Frank Catalanato who walked back in the second inning. He's been the lone base runner for the Mets prior to the uh, Fernando Tatis base hit. So talking about the health of guys let's start with just uh, holiday and, and pool holes. I mean certainly there was concern a few days ago but uh, how about those two and I guess because they're playing they're, they're fine and ready to go. They are I mean when you think about spring training versus regular season you're going to be much more cautious dur during spring training just because you want to make sure that that. You're not putting anybody in jeopardy. You don't want it to become a big deal. And so it was just something that we were just making sure that that we limited the playing time in spring training, but they'll be full throttle by opening day. RBI double for Frank Catalanato. We were just talking about Mark McGuire and, and how at the beginning of spring we weren't sure how it was going to be treated from the media, from the fans. I, I, I mean, I can't imagine that you guys could be any more pleased with the way that things have transpired with McGuire. He, he's not the top of the conversation. The team is, and it's kind of an afterthought with what's going on. No, you're right. And, and when this whole thing was unfolding, and, and to start to envision what spring training was going to look like, I can assure you there were some sleepless nights. But you have to credit Mark because the first few days down here, he he made himself available. Um, we never did anything from an organizational standpoint to try to to not let him be available to, to not expose him and, and I think the writers appreciated that. That's a hit foul out of play by Henry Blanco and uh, Mark McGuire of course has done a great job here in spring. He talked to the players they love his approach and how accessible and aggressive he's been in trying to help them out which is what you wanted to see. Absolutely. He's the one thing you can say about Mark is he's got a lot of enthusiasm a lot of energy he's bringing to the park and I think it's really spilling over on some of our hitters and you know they love working with him they really enjoy it. He's a very thoughtful person he's definitely um, insightful at what he brings as a coach and you know when you start thinking about someone that doesn't have any experience as a coach you you wonder how they will communicate and so far he's done a tremendous job. Well where are you at right now with uh, your fifth starter. Uh, Jaime Garcia Rich Hill and, and Kyle McClellan. I think if we had to open today we would go with Jaime Garcia just the way he's pitched. Um, you know we're not drawing a line in the sand right now and saying that's exactly what's going to happen. We're going to give him one more turn through this and uh, see how he does. But he has had a tremendous spring and, and looks like he's just ready to, to be a major league starter and it's uh, it's exciting to see. And, and I also think maybe having McClellan be used in the bullpen strengthens that. So I think it's kind of a win win both spots. And insurance policy for Hill at Triple A. That's exactly right. You know, remember the play yesterday that Brendan Ryan made. Mm -hmm. You know, and I talked to him a little bit about his anticipation. And you know, he had to, have, in his mind, he was anticipating to get there, made that throw. Watch him here, go out here on the double. Look at him starting to get that arm ready just in case he <laughs> has to make a snap throw. I mean, he's he's into the game. He he takes things to a near, little different level and. I think he brings everybody up. Well, he's, he's he's a high high energy, fast twitch, and very very instinctive player. And I think that's uh, why he's become so special. And you know, when he was young, we saw that in him. 
but there were just so many little things that would be distracting to him that, that just always <laughs> got him in trouble. But um, very talented player, and uh, I think he's finally kind of fitting into and understanding what's expected of him. I think what also helped is best defensive play in the National League at shortstop, and the fact he hit 290. All of a sudden, everybody said, this guy, you know, can play. No, there's no doubt that that performance will help get you that respect. <laughs> but I also think he's matured and, and grown up a little bit from, from just getting this experience and, and understanding that people are now counting on him. And when you're playing A ball down here at the, in the Florida State League, you don't necessarily put the weight of the world on you. And now he gets it. And, you know, I think... Uh, He's a fun guy to watch, and I'm happy we get to do it day in and day out. How about David Freeze? What have you thought of his camp? You know, he's, he's had a good camp. He's, the way he's gone about it has been smart. Um, I definitely think he's ready for that job, and, and you know, I, I think he's earned it, and which is which is nice because I didn't want to get to a place in this this camp where I felt like we were just handing him something. So the fact is, is, is the, his approach and what he's accomplished is, is making our decisions a lot easier. How do you think Mo Tony will handle, and I know you don't want to speak for him, but Felipe Lopez getting a start at third base and Schumacher at second base, and Al and I have been talking about it. I know a lot of fans talk about it, but if you have a lefty on the mound, does Lopez get that start at second? If you have a righty on the mound, does he get the start at third? Or how do you think that's all going to unfold? No, I would I would envision that, that Freeze will get a majority of the playing time, but there might be a tough right-hander or something where, where Tony feels he could give... Uh, David the day off. I, I do think using Lopez maybe if we're facing a tough left-hander makes sense for Schumacher. I definitely see Lopez getting a lot of at-bats in a lot of different ways, but in terms of freeze right now, we've got to give him the work at third or, or we might as well keep him at Memphis. So he's going to get a lot of at-bats early. So two away, and here's John Main. They've got a right-hander uh, getting loose in their bullpen. The Mets do as Carpenter has struck out six today, and he's allowed just uh, two base hits. And walked one. A little concerned with a little thin on on the bench from left hand hitting side. Well, I mean it's easy to, to draw that conclusion, but if you think of Lopez as as that bat off the bench at times, I, I think it's okay. And you only the other have way one, to, one bullet. No, but the other way to think about it is that could be the day skips on the bench. Right. So sure. um, I think it's somewhat interchangeable. I, I definitely don't think that's going to decide how good our season is, but I, I am something that it might be something where we have to address as we get further along in the year. And I've always said one of Tony's great strengths is he worries about what he has, not what he doesn't have. Right, and, and that's how we're really approaching it. Carpenter just kind of stared back into home plate umpire C.B. Buckner and took his time, wiped his brow, and now he gets that strike call that he was looking for. That's what you expect, though, with Chris Carpenter. Perfect. <laughs> One and two, the count. There is a way you can do it respectfully and get your point across that, you know, I thought I was squeezed. It's not Babe Ruth at the plate. It's the opposing pitcher. And there you go. <laughs> Mo, have a great year. We appreciate it very much, and uh, it's been a good spring. Looking forward to the upcoming season. Great. We'll look forward to seeing you guys regular season, and thank you. John Mosellock with us. Carp leads it off when we come back. So a couple of uh, solo home runs for the Cardinals today. 2-1 in favor of St. Louis as we move to the bottom of the fifth at Roger Dean Stadium in Jupiter, Florida. Many thanks to John Mosellock for stopping by and visiting with us. Been very accommodating since his role has been bumped up to GM and visiting with us and giving us information. We certainly appreciate that. Here's Carpenter, 2-1 St. Louis. Popped up, right side, Jacobs over, and makes the catch. Fireworks night is back at Bush Stadium. That'll be on a Friday night, April 16th, and that's the start of the kids' opening weekend. And they'll have a great fireworks display from the comfort of your seat. The Mets will be in town, and for tickets, visit us online at cardinals.com. Al of kids 15 and under for any of the games that weekend Friday Saturday or Sunday come to the ballpark you get a free ticket to an upcoming game in the 2010 season and the promotions all weekend long against the Mets and again go to Cardinals.com to get your tickets. 
once again, we were always uh, amazed with the great giveaway items, sponsors and everything, but uh, marketing department does a really good job. And Kid and Lou Brock, about the Brock Abrellas coming back coming this back. year. It's coming back. A strike that's a little bit low on the outside corner to Schumacher. Skip is 0 for 2. He's grounded out to second. And also flied out to center. Cardinals have already sold 2.6 million tickets. So important because ownership is allowed. John Mosaic the freedom. When they come through the turnstiles, they reinvest that money. As they did last year with Matt Holiday, as the Cardinals were very competitive. Fans were coming out. They took advantage of those family Sundays and half price nights, which are great ways to go to the ballpark. Very affordable. You know, for instance, a family of four Al can come to the ballpark on a half price night for 33 bucks. That's it, $33 total. And uh, make sure you take advantage of those half price nights. There's a number of those this season. The family Sundays are discounted tickets, plus you get a free hot dog and soda. Well, everyone realizes the tough economy today and, and you know, the exclusive areas and the high price areas, uh, they, you know, people have it can gravitate to there, but you know, for a family who really wants to enjoy this great sport, they're still are very, very affordable, and the most affordable of all the sports is baseball. Yeah, in the first week, there are half price nights upcoming at the ballpark. And again, we encourage you to go to cardinals.com. You do not need the STL anymore, it's cardinals.com. Now, if you type in stlcardinals.com, it'll take you to the website, but trying to make that transition to Cardinals.com. There's a 2 1 pitch. Yeah, Bears repeating again that all 130 regular season games and including the, the game uh, from Minnesota will all be in HD this year. High definition. So every game in HD this year for the Cardinal fans. Just missed in a full count on Brendan Ryan who homered back in the first. Just think on HD, we gain what, 20 pounds? Oh, yeah. 3 2. And this is going to be caught as the wind is playing tricks with it. It's a fair ball, and the catch made by Mike Jacobs. Well, that wasn't an easy play. 2 1, St. Louis after five. Spring training on Fox Sports Midwest. Well, the top of the six rolls in, and it's a 2-1 ball game in favor of the Cardinals. Home Depot, Depot brings you doing more on defense, doing more on defense today. Mike Jacobs, win playing tricks on that baseball. He made a fine play. That was not easy at all. And the first pitch by Carpenter is a strike. This may be his final inning of work. As Trevor Miller is starting to get loose in the Cardinal bullpen. Would you see Miller coming in to face Gary Matthews Jr. maybe who's due up third. Val to spin is 0 for 2 he's lined out. And also struck out. Trying to bunt Carpenter leads Pujols and the tag is there. Albert was over to maybe get that baseball. The problem was if he got it wouldn't have mattered. Only play was for Carpenter to make. And I don't think Carpenter would have got over there in time. So nice play. Albert very aggressive gets over there tags a the man out in front of the bag. If he waited to the bag he might have lost that foot race. Ruben Tejada now. Alvespin got the attention of uh, Red Cheney's. Said, "Where did this kid play?" He said, "Brooklyn." And he goes, "He looks like a pretty good player." It's good to see Red here. About 65 straight seasons in uniform for the great Cardinal manager and second baseman. 
Bob Gibson here, Lou Brock as well. Tejada is 0 for 2 with a couple of pop outs, and both have been to Albert Pujols. That's had four players in the top 100 prospects. They have got the potential setup man of Mejia, who they absolutely love. He's a guy that throws very, very hard, but they're unsure as to whether or not they want to bring him to the big leagues and rush him. Very concerned about that. But he has been probably their best prospect this spring. And he, Mejia was uh, number 56, their first baseman and organization player of the year. Ike Davis, number 62. Yeah, that's another one, too. Ando Martinez, their right fielder, is number 77. And Wilmer Flores is ranked 88. So, and then you talk about Tejada and Elder Spin. You know, so they're starting to come up with the nucleus of some fine players for the future. They're getting a little older in the two. One two pitch. Omar Minaya is on that hot seat as well. The general manager of the Mets. But as you mentioned now there's not much you can do when guys get hurt and that team was set up to win the last couple of years but as they have gotten older those players you know Beltran and we haven't even mentioned him and David Wright a down year Jose Reyes at short was hurt Delgado limited time. I mean those are big bats big names not in your everyday lineup yeah. and you're not going to win as Carpenter can't believe he didn't get that strike call either as he questions the home plate umpire. He just asked if that was low. Some umpires get upset when you do that but you know, when you throw you think you throw a strike and it isn't called why not have the right to ask and that's a walk. Second walk of the day, only third of the spring. But you know, Carver is such a perfectionist. Sometimes he gets a little upset when he doesn't get it. You can make the trip downtown in St. Louis with your youngster for kids opening weekend at Bush Stadium. Saturday, April 17th, kids uh, ages 15 and under receive a Cardinals pennant that will feature Yadier Molina and Adam Wainwright. That's courtesy of Coca Cola and the Pasta House. Sunday, you get the uh, kids replica jersey that'll feature Matt Holiday, courtesy of Ice Mountain. And for more information, visit Cardinals.com. And again, if you'd like to get a free ticket for your youngster, that's the weekend to do it. Fit kids 15 and under get a free ticket that weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And the Friday night of kids' opening weekend is the fireworks night. Another check on Tejada. Gary Matthews Jr. has. Struck out twice. Once looking, the other swinging. Mike Jacobs is on deck. Cardinals have extended Carpenter here in this ball game all the way to the sixth, but this is about the time you start to do that now, isn't it? Well, you have to. And as I mentioned, he has one more start before the regular season. Well, he came into this action in his first three starts, throwing a total of nine innings. That's a factor that. They have really dropped the innings for pitchers the last 20 years in spring training. Throw behind by LaRue. <laughs> Two balls and no strikes. In the beginning of spring training, they had uh, Carpenter, Wainwright, everybody miss a, a whole turn. Used all the kids and everything, just trying to so to limit them one fewer start in spring training. 2-0 pitch, double play ball. Schumacher, Brendan Ryan, double play. 4-6-3. Don't go anywhere. Pujols leads it off when we come back. 2-3-0 for the Cardinals, 1-2-0 for the Mets. As we come to you from Jupiter, Florida, spring training in full swing, and our next telecast will be on next Friday. Target Field in Minnesota, the Cardinals and the Twins, Target Stadium debut, and we'll come your way in high definition for that ball game and all season long. This pitching change is brought to you by Chevy.
Fernando Nieve who's trying to make their club out of spring training as a possible starter. Three games and an ERA of six. Went to spring training a year ago with the Astros. Then he was claimed off of waivers by the Mets in mid March. Sent to their double A affiliate in Binghamton. Was promoted to triple A and then eventually made his Mets debut on June 5th. And we saw him pitch against the Cardinals and pitch very well. Yeah, he pitched very well. We've seen him with Houston prior to that in the past couple seasons. 1 1 has popped up off the bat of Albert Pujols. Matthews Jr. was playing very deep. Calls off the shortstop to make the catch. So Pujols 1 for 3 with his solo home run. And here is Matt Holliday. Matt Holliday has walked and also was hit by a pitch. Well, that was good news in visiting with John Mozalock about. Cardinals catcher Yadier Molina that he will hopefully fingers crossed knock on wood be available for opening day. Or even if he isn't it's going to be not as serious or something. Yeah. You know. you know, they can get a lot of treatment on those things and you know just how valuable he is. Offensively and defensively and his leadership. Trevor Miller continues to get warm in the Cardinal bullpen. And that's one of the. Luxuries you have with the veteran Jason LaRue, who was an everyday catcher for many years before he came to St. Louis. The 2 0 pitch. Taken low, 3 0. Nieve made his major league debut with Houston. He went 3 3 back in 2006. Minor leagues in 07 08. Till at the very end of the year, he appeared in 11 games in 2008. Then three and three last year with the Mets. On three and zero, oh, it's a base hit for Holiday. He defeated the Cardinals in six shutout innings towards the end of uh, June. On three and zero, oh, Matt Holiday swinging away. Elevated a little bit, stays up and hit hard through the left side of the infield for the hit. His day is through. It's John Jay take over at first base. Ludwig has fly to center, also grounded out to third. One out and a runner at first in a 2 1 game. John Jay over first base is a left handed hitter. More than likely targeted for and ticketed for Memphis. But uh, you know he's one of the rising stars of the minor leagues. One guy we have not seen so far yesterday or today Alan Craig who is the player of the year in the organization. One thing that they have found out last year and again in spring training here is he can hit. And Tony said if he's going to make the club he's going to have to hit himself onto the club. He's done that but right now there's just not a position for him. Right it's. You, know, you, you look at him and, and he's probably the least defensively inclined of uh, the Stavanoas, the Mathers, the you know guys like that, Alan Craig, but you know, there's no denying he can hit. So Steve Spag Nolo was uh, down on the field before the game, the Rams head coach. Well, Tony's friends now. He's, his bags try to soak up everything. And, you know, it's, it's amazing how some of these football guys have really have gotten gravitated to Tony to try and learn as much as they can and vice versa. Seen Bill Parcells and of course the of course the general Bobby Knight has been here. Two and two of the count on Ludwig. Rizzioni spoke to the ball club early. In. The Olympics right before the Olympics part of the miracle team 1980. This could be a double play ball out at second out at first double play. Mike Jacobs leads it off in the seventh when we come back.
It's 2-1 in favor of the Cardinals as we move to the top of the seventh here on Fox Sports Midwest. Our Chevy call to the bullpen. And the tall lefty, Trevor Miller, in his second season with the Cardinals. Very, very tough on left-handed batters last year. He went 13 for 96 and hit just 135 against him. And Trevor's picking up where he left off. Five shutout appearances. We're allowing two hits. Very likable guy. I was I was really surprised. You know, I, I did, did not put him in the class of how well he pitched last year. And we saw him in the past, but uh, pleasantly surprised with you know not only how well he pitched, but what a good class act he is. He has had the most appearances by a left-hander. Since back in 2003, he's at 484. Brian Fuentes, the former closer of the Rockies, now with the Angels at 462. J.C. Romero is in the top five. Scott Ayer and Alan Embry. Made at least 60 appearances in each of the last seven seasons. And he comes in and walks. Mike Jacobs. Uh, he's allowed two hits, and I think that is fourth walk, and pitching in his sixth inning. So, a lot of time to take that little breaking ball, you know, dial it into the strike zone, and get command of it. How about the job of Carpenter here today? With a couple of the walks, he strikes out seven, gave up just two hits and in six innings of work. We knew that 10 point ERA was a misprint. Tatis looks at a strike. Fernando today has grounded back to the pitcher and also singled and scored their lone run back in the fifth. His story has been quite remarkable over the years, hasn't it? Fernando? Tatis, yeah. And we was talking with him before the game, and of course, anytime you talk to Fernando, we got to live that. Uh, Famous night with his two grand slams in the same inning in Los the Angeles. Same pitcher, Chan Ho Park. Chan Ho Park. I was telling the coaches that he was with about one or two batters away from the possibility of coming up a third time in the same inning with the bases loaded. Chan Ho Park looked like his career was done, but uh, he's been able to hang around too. Fernando went to Montreal, had some lean years, and glad to see him battle back. And you know, he's been very helpful to the Mets. He played the outfield and played it well. Oh, two pitch. Didn't he has almost like a social anxiety before when he was with Montreal. He kind of got into a little bit uh, of an area like that. And battled back through it before anybody really heard of that diagnosis. Ooh, just missed on the inside corner. Thirty plus home runs one season with the Cardinals. Two two pitch. Out in front, pulled foul and bullpen catcher protecting the pitcher and the catcher warming up there down that uh, third base line. And that probably would have zeroed in, hit that catcher right square in the back of the head. And that uh, catcher not protecting. 2 2. Broken bat over. The shortstop Brendan Ryan and a base hit into left. So a walk in a single and a chance here for Frank Catalanato. Cardinals with a right hander getting loose in the bullpen. Brendan Ryan almost came up with this. And a little breaking bat. A uh, little slider coming in, shatters the bat, but he muscles it out there. Remember, we talked about how Tony, starting yesterday, starts going deep into these games like he was going to. Manage it during the regular season. So 
you would think that this will be his last batter with the right hand hitter Blanco on deck. The strike on the outside corner. Catalanato today has walked that was back in the second and has an RBI double in the left center that was in the fifth to score Fernando Tatis. And both managers are loving this opportunity because this is the type of matchup that they can see a hitter and pitcher how they handle pressure. Breaking ball fouled away. Nothing in two. Renato is going to be a bench player if he makes the Mets. And Trevor's just in one of his normal little hot boxes. End of last season, multi year contract for Trevor Miller. 0 2. There's the curveball again, and it's popped up. Shallow center. Put away by Joe Mather. Let's take a look at our Chevy pitch by pitch. Does Tony LaRusso make a pitch and change? Well, he got the job done. Side wheeling the fastball, gets ahead in the count, then a little breaking ball, and then another breaking ball. Jammed him a little bit, got underneath it, pops it up. And it looks like, is that Boggs? Yep, Mitchell Boggs coming in. The first and second and one out. 26 year old Mitchell Boggs in our Chevy called to the bullpen. Made nine starts for the Cardinals last year. Also seven appearances out of the bullpen. Struck out 46 and 58 innings. He gets Henry Blanco. The Cardinals are really impressed with his velocity coming out of the bullpen a year ago. Well, that's it. Uh, you know, found that it was really a struggle for him to compete and be a, a five inning pitcher as a starter but his velocity was very high out of the bullpen and a ground ball slowly hit Lopez thought about going to second to first There's and a Alan good Craig. pick very good pick by Craig yeah. talk about his defense well you can help him out if you make a strike chest high but a nice play by the slugger at first base watch you'll see him come in here not hit hard enough Thinks about two, but then goes there, throws a sinker, and there's Craig with that fine play at the other end. So runners at second and third, tying run at third, go ahead, run at second. Two one ball game. And here's Martinez. Mitchell Box is on the caravan with me this last offseason, was gracious with the fans, and one of the things he talked about. I don't care if I'm starting or relieving. I just want a chance to be in the big leagues. No doubt about it, Ted. A little surprising with those seven relief appearances. They it projected him as one of these guys that could be a potential closer on days when Franklin was not available. Well, they feel I don't coming out of the see bullpen. that that well. I want to have see guy have a little more success in seven appearances. One of the things they said about him coming out of the bullpen was that the velocity was up, and you would know this, Al, because obviously in the back of his head he knew, hey, I don't have to be stretched out for six, seven, eight innings. I can just let it loose. That's what intrigued the Cardinals initially. One two pitch. Two and two. If McClellan goes to the bullpen, which it seems like that would be the case if Garcia is your fifth starter, that makes this a little bit tougher for Mitchell Boggs to make this team. Hawksworth is out of options. It's out of options, so you know you almost have to give him a spot. He's earned that through what he's and the investment they've had him on him over the time. And when he did show Late last season when he was healthy, he, he was very effective on 4-0 and 2-point ERA. He was a little bitter yesterday than he had been earlier in spring. Boggs is at a, a rough spring. That's why we talk about that you have to have McClellan back there. Broken bat hit to Craig and nice work by Mitchell Boggs. Very nice. Next strand two, time to stretch.
It's back. It's the Hyundai long drive inning. Your chance to win an all new 2011 Hyundai Sonata. Coming soon to your local Hyundai dealers. Stay tuned for details. Gorgeous afternoon once again here in Jupiter, Florida at Roger Dean Stadium. Felipe Lopez leads it off in our Chevy call to the bullpen. Takes us to a familiar face. Kiko Calero, the former Cardinal. This time Kiko Calero uh, was pitching against the Cardinals. He gave up a leadoff bottom of the ninth inning home run game winner to go tie. Ruben Gotai has been Gotai. option to triple A for the Cardinals. Calero was a late pickup. He was still a free agent deep into the offseason. Maybe even when spring training started, he was still unsigned. Kiko was very good when he was with the Cardinals. Remember, he had that very sharp slider. Nasty slider. He had good numbers last year for the Marlins. It was surprising that he was still available. And a call third strike on Felipe Lopez. So Lopez who has an infield hit has now popped out and struck out. Good start here for Calero. Brings in Joe Mather. Mather today is bounced into a 6 4 3 double play. And walked back in the fourth. He's in center field this afternoon. Colby Rasmus out with a sore right knee, but not expected to be serious. This one to hold him out. Jason LaRue on deck. We're in the seventh of a 2 1 ball game. Check swing at a strike. Kiko Calero is part of the uh, Molder deal. Along with Danny Heron. There was talk that he might wind up with the Chicago Cubs, but here he is. Omar Minaya needed some help in the bullpen and signed for the Mets. The Cubs had 97 wins in 2008. Then last year, Giovanni Soto. Hit 218. Alfonso Soriano went from 280 to 241. There's that good tight breaking ball. Ramirez hurt a couple different times. Really took a toll on him. Milton Bradley. Who? <laughs> now with the Seattle Mariners and Marlon Bird has been picked up. He got a three year deal as a free agent to play center field. The Cubs were hoping that Ted Lilly would pitch this spring. It's lifted down the left field line. Home run distance but pulled foul and they have pushed that back so it's a shoulder surgery that he is coming off of. They thought he would get a, a start or two in spring that will not be the case. He's been very good that's been one of the really good signings by Jim Henry. Yes it was it was a questionable sign at the time but he's been worth that every penny. And he was five year fifty five million something like that. Here's a 2 2 pitch. Mather looks at a call third strike, and Calero's come in with two strikeouts. Both looking. He's got that kind of wicked slider, and then he kind of him up, painted him with the fastball. Storied Mizzou Illinois rivalry coming to Bush Stadium. Wednesday, April 7th, Tigers in fighting a line. I will face off in a college baseball game at Bush. Tickets on sale right now at Cardinals.com. 314-345-9000 to find out more. And we want to remind folks there's still good seats available for that kids opening weekend against the Mets. Fireworks, the pennant, and the Jersey Day. Three days in a row and kids have a chance to pick up a free ticket for an upcoming game. Took something off that pitch one and one. Kiko looks sharp today. We've always liked him, and he, you know, he has that swing and miss slider. His fastball is sneaky, spat, uh, sneaky. Mather can attest to that as he was caught looking. Check swing and a strike. 
One and two. Jason way off balance. Lifted in the air out to shallow left. Catalanato is there, and we played seven here on Fox Sports Midwest. And the Cardinals have a 2 1 lead. Cardinals baseball this afternoon is brought to you by the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. That's the power of Home Depot. Alex Cintron will be the pinch hitter for the Mets. Always remembered Cardinal lore for running into Scott Rowland. Oh, that's right. The playoffs against Arizona. Is that the first shoulder one? Yes. Yeah, it was. And then the next one was Hesop Choi. Choi at first. This has popped up. The Mets Jay. dug out and uh, rather bullpen, and that's out of play. And Jay giving chase right there is. Got a young second baseman that's been really a surprise for the Cardinals. Donovan Solano has hit extremely well this spring. He's now playing second base. You see the youngster. 0 1 pitch to Cintron. Foul back and a good cut. Second inning of work here for Mitchell Boggs. Mitchell came in, had runners at first and second, only one out. Got Blanco to ground out, then Martinez to ground out. So good work to get out of the jam. Got Trevor Miller off the hook, and it's no balls and two strikes. Albert Pujols is homer today, and so has Brendan Ryan, and it's 2 1 Redbirds. 0 2 pitch. Breaking ball and a strikeout. Set up down and away. The breaking ball. Frames it. So one out. Top of the order. Valdespin is the hitter. Good fastball in there for a strike. Dave Duncan has to be pleased with what he's seen so far from Boggs. One of the biggest things is controlling the strike zone. And that's always a question with with Boggs. Carpenter was very good today with seven strikeouts and six innings. There's a strike. Nothing in two. What do you think he's best suited, Al, when you talk about Mitchell Boggs? Starter in the really bullpen. Yeah. But I mean, you, you sit there and you, you look at him as a one or two inning guy. Base hit into right. 0 2 mistake. You bring up young kids and, you know, and they're, they're flirting with 100 pitches in the fourth and fifth inning. You just don't help yourself. You, right. you put too much of a tax on your bullpen. You know, let guys understand, have some success. You can you can condition them to more be successful using them in the bullpen. And then a year or two later, if, if you think they have the material to become a starter, so be it. But very few guys can go right from AAA and, and go right into your rotation and, and not miss a beat. There's Ruben Tejada. Mitchell Boggs said last year when John Smoltz was part of the Cardinal rotation. He said it's comparable for a guy that grew up watching Albert Pujols to be playing with him. He said that was what it was Absolutely, like for him yeah. with John Smoltz. He's from Dalton, Georgia. Carpet capital of the United States. You know, but he did get all those Atlanta Braves games. And John Smoltz has been in his bedroom for how many years growing up? He said the posters and Idolized John Smoltz. Runner goes. Chance for the Rude. A second. Safe. Good throw and looked like a nice tag, but call goes the Mets way. How about Valdespin and what he's done today? He's showing you a little speed. He saw a range earlier in the game and now stolen base. Yeah, he said is safe as he gets the hand 
to the bag ahead of the tag. Well, that's what you're talking about. These little infielders for for the the Mets are pretty pretty good. Now Tejada is now being pitch hit for by Chris Carter. Two balls, no strikes. There's another great player coming out of the Atlanta system from their area. You'll hear all about him this regular season, but he's been the talk of spring. Jason Hayward. He's like 20 or something. 20 years old. He'll be 20 the entire season, so he doesn't even turn 21 until the off season. And Bobby Cox said, "Hey, if he's good enough to make the team, and we're going to play him, you know, there's no need if if he's that good to be a major leaguer to send him to the minor leagues. If he's ready, we're going to play him." He's done that in the past with the young players. And that's kind of what uh, you know John Mosellac was talking about with Garcia. You know he's ready. Get out of play. Two and two. Two two pitch. Pull just foul. We got to talk to Boggs is he not to like that location. Carter spent time last season with Boston and Pawtucket. 294 at Triple A with 16 home runs, 61 RBIs, and was 0 for 5 in Boston. 2 2. Out in front, popped it up. Shallow left field. Catch made by John Jay. Back to second goes Val to spin, and there's two outs. That brings in Gary Matthews Jr. Tough day for Gary today. A couple of strikeouts also grounded into a 4 6 3 double play. One of the teams in the Central yesterday and today, we haven't talked about Pittsburgh. 17 losing seasons and counting and rebuilding yet again. Five year plan's been <laughs> been used a few times. Five and then there was three, <laughs> so now you're up to eight, and then another five yeah. turned into thirteen, and all of a sudden you look up, you're at seventeen. And that the North American uh, record? Yes. I want to say it broke the Phillies record. Phillies record, but I mean for all sports. Right. Round ball to second. Solano there, and we're midway through eight. Two one Cardinals. Roger Dean Stadium, Grapefruit League, and Jupiter, Florida. Gorgeous day once again. Cardinals with a two one lead, and here is Alan Craig. Craig hit 322 at Memphis. 26 home runs, 83 RBIs. He was named the Minor League Player of the Year for 2009. One ball, one strike. Also led all the Cardinals minor leaguers in hits, runs. Tied for slugging percentage as we look at Mark McGuire at 547. Like fourth in Pacific Coast League in batting, home runs, hits, third in total bases. Big star in the postseason. But where do you play him? That's the big question. How does he make this team? He can hit, but where do you play him? Seventh best prospect and best power hitter in the Cardinal organization by Baseball America. Three and one. Descends, of course, has bounced around now with the Mets. Been a starter, now working out of their bullpen. I think Allen has like six doubles already this spring. 
He was slowed in the beginning with a little injury. But no doubt he can swing the bat. And I'm sure the defense is a little bit exaggerated. Well, as he said a couple of weeks ago, he said, people make this big case out of my defense. I, I play defense fine. It's just finding me a spot. Right. And his best spots are pretty well solidified by Pujols and Holiday. Yeah. But it is nice to see the real competition between, you know, Mather, Freeze, Davinoa, Alan Craig. They're all good friends. You know, they all want to have their shot, and they're all pulling for each other. They'd all love to be in the same team together. Stavanoa has had an outstanding spring. And Craig draws a leadoff walk. Wednesday, Fox Sports Midwest takes you inside Cardinal Spring Training with Big Mac, Mark McGuire. Behind the scenes, we have a mic'd up. You can watch BP with Mark McGuire, and that's coming up uh, next week, Wednesday at 7.30. And Ron Chambers he is our pinch runner at first base. And Solano will get his first uh, plate appearance. Put a pinch runner in yesterday and promptly stole a base. See if that's not the same case. Put a little Cardinals hit and run on. Yeah, Cardinals have a lefty getting loose in the bullpen, a lefty getting loose for the Mets as well. Two to one St. Louis, Brendan Ryan and Albert Pujols with solo home runs. Not a very good attempt there. And Kendall will come down and talk to him a little bit. Number get your attention, won't it? 579. Soul number 89. <laughs> the back of his jersey. There was the hit and run. It's a fair ball. And the first out here in the uh, bottom of the eighth. So one out. And here's shortstop Brendan Ryan. Of course, late. In spring, late in this game, Brendan Ryan's still in there. He needs at bats. Brendan with a solo home run back in the first. He's also flied out to center and popped out to first. Big news for us at Fox Sports Midwest today. We announced that every Cardinal game will be in high definition. And that starts in Minnesota. By the way, we will not be the first game at Target Field. The Minnesota Golden Gophers will play a uh, charity game. Every ticket is two dollars and it is already sold out. And every dollar raise goes to charity. Think about how far that organization has come from a team that looked like contraction was going to get them. And now they have arguably the best catcher in baseball, an MVP, a batting champion locked up. That they're going to pay him nearly $200 million and a brand new stadium. That's coming a pretty uh, long way from where they were. Always uh, admired that organization and their scouts, particularly in, particularly in the 60s, 70s, 80s. With no money, they found talent after talent after talent. Here's a 2 0 pitch. I was originally drafted by Minnesota out of high school by a scout named Jesse Flores. And Jesse, no longer with us, but I mean, I, I can't, you know, tens of prospects that he signed, everything like this. And, you know, I, I never pitched as a senior in high school. And, uh, you know, he signed. Bly Levin, he signed Danny Darwin, he's, he signed a whole host of guys and you know probably Tommy Hall and 
Some of those guys out of Southern California probably never paid more than ten thousand dollars or so for anybody. They just Calvin Griffin just didn't didn't allow these guys to have money, but they were just guys that would find people and you know that you just didn't uh, people didn't go to certain places. They just had great scouts. Think about the hometown products that Minnesota has had. Kent Herbeck, Paul Molitor, Dave Winfield. Those guys eventually came back. Jack Morris, another one, but you know, the one guy though that may be the best of the bunch before it's all said and done, they just wrapped up in Joe Mauer. He means so much to that city and that organization. Three and two the count. In the air off the end of the bat, shallow right. And there's two outs. You can take in a game from some of Bush Stadium's most popular seats. They are the all-inclusive areas. You get a great view of the game, plus all of your food and drinks included for one great price. And they have these for single game tickets, the all-inclusive tickets. And they're on sale right now at Cardinals.com. Pitching change for the Mets as we step aside. Chevy called to the bullpen, and this is 33 year old lefty Pedro Feliciano. Made 88 appearances last year for the Mets. Club record, and that led the majors with 88 appearances. And this is Nick Stavanoa. He's made a case to make the club. He's got 15 hits in 15 games 15 for 41 and batting 366. 88 uh, appearances and 59 innings. Situational lefty. One ball, one strike with two outs and an assurance run out there at second base. One home run and four RBIs for Stavanoa. Nick's been on that bubble the last couple of years, and after a while, you kind of say, hey, I'm going to make it stick. He's enjoying the spring, just wants it to continue. Sometimes that works. For you and other times against you because you know did you show enough in those last couple of years that it over you know now that you're really swinging the bat well does it, do they have they already produced their thought process and what kind of player you are are you a 4A under the major leagues but a good solid AAA player and a guy like Alan Craig who hasn't had that chance at the major league level do you Give him that opportunity. Jose Reyes, as we mentioned, not with the club right now, and David Wright, Beltran, but Feliciano has been there day in and day out for the Mets last couple of seasons. Denny's Reyes is getting loose in the Cardinal bullpen. Blanco out to visit. Two and two the count on Nick Stavanoa. Feliciano set, and here comes a 2 2. Stavanoa breaks his bat into the stands. And let's hope everybody's going to be all right. <laughs> 2 1, St. Louis, top of the ninth rolls in. Denny's Reyes will take over for the Cardinals. And let's take a look at our Chevy player of the game and its starter Chris Carpenter with seven strikeouts this afternoon in his six innings. Only gave up a couple of hits in one run and he's our Chevy player of the game. Quite impressive as he started this affair and stretched out those six innings. The bullpen has taken over done a good job and now turn it over to Reyes here for the ninth. 
Then a right hander warming up, so Reyes could be just the Jacobs bat. Dennis Reyes in his second season with the Cardinals last year, he had 75 appearances, 41 innings, ERA of 3.29. Round ball, fair ball to first. Craig has it. Or is that David Freeze? Yes. Yeah, they switched out Craig, obviously, for Freeze. Saw a pinch runner, and now David takes over at first. And Denny's Reyes taking over on the mound. Record of 1 0, 1.42 ERA this spring. Here's Fernando Tatis. Slider down and in. He's swinging over the top. Tatis with a couple of base hits today. And a run scored. Their only run scored back in the fifth. 2 1 Cardinals, two solo home runs. Brendan Ryan and Albert Pujols. One ball, one strike. Angel Pagan is on deck for the Mets. That right hand warming up, but it looks like it's maybe a minor leaguer. Ninety-seven, who we were not told. So Reyes gets a shot at the save. It was Franklin yesterday, as he's had four consecutive. Scoreless innings, and there's a look at David Freeze now over at first base. 3 1 pitch and a walk. So tying run is aboard. Go ahead run comes to the plate. They got Francoeur and Jason Bay flanking in the corner outfielders. Matthews and Pagan out there in center. Another check on the runner over at first. That's called by Tony LaRusso to Jason LaRue and then out to Denny's Reyes. Sometimes those lefties will just set you up with a couple of easy throws over to first and then they'll have their best move. See Tatis is almost picked off. Really no place to go. Here's the tie and run. Cardinals have turned a double play today. That was back in the sixth. They've also hit into one as well. Good pitch. No balls at two strikes on Pagan. This looks like he's a little better shape this year. First year in the major leagues was back in 1997. When was Cincinnati, the Dodgers, Colorado, Texas, Pittsburgh, Kansas City, San Diego, Minnesota, and second year with the Cardinals. Pagan a switch hitter. Third season with the Mets. Last year he had 306 and 88 games. Another check on Tatis.
anticipation of this season has just got me. <laughs> One and two, the count on Pagan. Because with the Cubs, we saw him back in 2006. Briefly in 07, then traded to the Mets for a minor leaguer. One ball and two strikes on Angel Pagan. Two and two. Cardinals picked up a solo home run by Brendan Ryan in the first. And then Albert Pujols, his second home run of the spring was in the fourth. Two two pitch. And he got him. Pagan down on strikes and the Mets final hope is Henry Blanco. Lulled him to sleep here. Backdoor breaking ball gives up on it. Hits the corner. And Henry Blanco, the final hope now for the Mets. Over for 3 today. First pitch taken for a ball. Grounded into a fielder's choice in the second. Flied out to left and also grounded out to first. One zero pitch in there for strike. Martinez on deck if Blanco can extend it. It's a nice career Blanco is being most part of a backup catcher. For many years Greg Maddox that was his personal catcher. You know, with, uh, Guy like Maddox says I want to throw to you every day that gets the attention of other organizations. One ball and two strikes. A little that reputation that you can guide young pitchers. The next two Blanco swing and a miss and Reyes finishes it off. And the Cardinals win it by the score of two to one. Redbirds continue to win. It's now five straight. So that's it from Roger Dean Stadium where the final score is the Cardinals two and the Mets one. Join us Friday as the Cardinals and Twins open up Target Field. Coverage on Fox Sports Midwest begins at 5. For Alberbowski and our entire crew, I'm Dan McLaughlin saying so long from Jupiter, Florida.